This is a typical, a typical disgusting display. And for that girl backstage, may make it publicly clear. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. I saw some of that shit going on. We used to go up there though. Nigga, some crazy shit. Nigga, you done seen it all just like I seen it all. We just. That, that was the way they did business back then. Yeah, fuck, fuck up. You want your butt to turn your head? Yeah. How many, yeah. How many times have we been told if you want that budget, shut the fuck up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that budget. Do this, this, that, and the third. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You gotta make this kind of music. You gotta make that kind of music. But this is a timeless record. Yeah, but we're selling death and destruction. <laughs> that's really, that's really, really to kind of like where we got to here, right? Where we are now. Uh, the industry people in there, like you said, they weren't like, it was good music back then, but they wanted to push the bad music because they make more money and shit. And then the brothers was like, Cause a lot of these dudes ain't gangsters at all. You know what I'm saying? You got gangster. You got people making gangster music that ain't gangsters. Look at Young Thug. Just like now. <laughs> Just like now. You know the label's like, yo, we want you to push this. Uh, I want to push this happy shit. Nah, nigga, we want to push yo, this shit. You're not getting the money. We made great upbeat happy records that's why i'm telling you you gonna love fall in love i really want you to do the remix definitely that's what it's about making good music people can just well young thug is gay but he you know he was supposed to be the homo thug <laughs> i guess so the you... only huh so you so you <laughs> so you saying he really yeah. is gay he a homo uh, thug. Uh, you don't hear that gotta... nigga complaining about leaving jail he got all the ass he can handle i gotta do the jerry song Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> trigger warning, trigger warning. Shit might get real. You're right, though. He done gained a lot of weight in jail, which is crazy. Like, he commissary who gained... heavy. Uh, Look yeah. at that. He commissary heavy, baby. 40 pounds. Yeah, I'm gonna leave from there. He got hair braided. Who braided his hair? Look, Who braided look. Young Thug's hair in jail? <laughs> tell him here in the car. I'm trying to say, this is one of my old school, old school from back in the day. We've known each other. I, I've known him since I was, what, 13 or 14? I was watching from the bar. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, these, these boys, these homo thugs, they ain't. Uh, from my black, my mystery sister says, hey. Hey, hey, how you doing, mystery you, sister? You gonna love her. You gonna love, That's what's up. love her. I don't know nobody that don't. <laughs> well, no, there's a few that have a problem with your brand of honesty. Hey. Look at that. I see the way that nigga was looking at you earlier today. <laughs> I'm trying to get out there ASAP. I ain't trying to yeah. get my hair braided. None of that no, shit. No, no, no. You got a whole <laughs> punk. You got a whole punk doing your washing your laundry. Uh, no, I got all that. Doing the laundry in the toilet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yo, what the niggas? Yo, them niggas. Like, yo, they get the county up. Yo, they be cracking me up, right? You're like doing the laundry in the they toilet. They sit right over the toilet. They yeah. clean that toilet out with the, the, with toilet the out soap. First. Yeah. And then they get their laundry and they make the laundry right there in the toilet and then they take yeah. it and they hang it up and then they turn no. around and then they make a little alcohol. They make a little lean no. out there. Ah, uh, can't do it. Yeah, you know, get you some, make you some tea cheese or spread or whatever part of the country, what ASAP. they call it. No, I'm trying to get out of there ASAP. Yeah. I done been locked up. I'm trying to get out of there ASAP. I ain't trying to make no, Look, no, I'm out. 
I know how to look. I ain't never done time not a day in my life. I use my time. I don't do time. I use time. Exactly. Um, but these niggas be up in there like they at grandma house. They damn sure do. I'll never forget one of the last times when they came and they they did you know they arresting on me and I was booking and it was this girl there in the whole this stuff. She was like, "All I need is fifty dollars, but I can't remember my mom phone number." That's crazy. That whole, There's a lot of people sat in jail. jail for three days. Guess how she got her mom to come and bond out? Got it. Her cousin got booked two days later and called her mom. <laughs> Yeah, don't nobody know nobody phone numbers no more. Oh, like back back in the day, you knew everybody's phone number in your head. You had like a hundred phone numbers. You just knew them shit. Number one, the human brain can hold over a million books worth of information comfortably without without stressing it or taxing it. We should be able to remember phone numbers. Niggas barely know know their own phone number. Shit, you know how many niggas I know that got to take one phone to call the other phone to give you the number they want you to have. Yeah. Wild. We're not using our minds like we used to. No, and it, it shows. Society is showing us. Definitely. <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for watching. Make sure you bang that subscribe button. This is One Book Podcast. Be heard.